the king, the king of kings. to the high definition experience of the extreme show the australia jack and Mazzidi, 1080p rendered and shot in 1080p and well there will be no complaints about the video quality or the sound quality as you're looking or hearing it is both in high definition no complaints whatsoever and just just get into business for the first time ever in high definition i'll stop saying that hopefully i will stop saying that but anyways Let's just get into to the Friday night movie hunt of tonight's movies premiering night or whatever you like to call it. January 21st, Friday of course. We got only one movie and that's it is entitled, excuse me, my grammar. I'm so happy about the high definition concept. Anyways, uh, the movie's title is No Strings Attached. Um, from the title it means 18 and over. But anyways, Ashen Kutcher stars with um, Natalie Portman. It is like a comedy about two guys loving each other, not two guys, two couples, uh, not love, but their relationship is based on physical activity. But then they seem to be thinking about having more than just physical, like, love on that crap. But anyways, that's the concept of the movie, so go watch it and waste your time. That's all for our Friday Night Movie Hunt. And now, last Sunday, we got an award show, another one, and like the first one of 2011, as far as I'm concerned, and um, it was the 68th annual Golden Globe Award. Did I say it correctly? Well, anyways, I'm just going to discuss two things. The first thing is, of course, how Bieber um, gave an award away. I do not remember which category, but it does not matter. Oh, yeah, the animation category. Toy Story 3 won it, but anyways, that's not the important thing I'm going to want to discuss. Beaver and his performance, or how he just gave the award with that girl next to him. I do not know who she is, but anyways, he, like, he was a bit nervous, and he didn't, like, he didn't do it in a good job. But anyways, he did not screw as much as... Andrew Garfield, how he screwed up, how he, uh, how he was going to introduce a movie or something. But anyways, he got stuck with a word, but huh? was that real or was he acting? I do not know what's up with that. But he's the future Spider-Man, the next Spider-Man that we built, Sony made. But anyways, um, Andrew Garfield just screwed the whole night. But the thing that bugged me is like, this is the Avatar thing all over again. And, uh, an overrated movie getting more awards than he deserves or it deserves. And that movie was The Social Network. I get why Facebook is ruining the actual commu communication between people, not just like on a computer. But really, how did not Inception win the best motion picture? Inception was really inspiring, giving, getting you to another dimension in movies. I'm not talking about how they shot the movie or the graphics, the idea and how it got us, like, they moved us in the movie. And, well, I'm just shocked. And just like the Avatar incident, I do not support the Foreign Film Association or whatever they are. They should not select um, the social network. It did not just get that award. It got, like, three or four awards, and it is truly, I repeat it, overrated movie that's all i got for the golden golden globe awards or whatever and it's not that entertaining show because it was hosted by that um what's his name ricky something that british guy who had who starred in the office uk version earlier than the u.s version but anyways that's all for the golden globes awards or whatever now let's just get into war wrestling entertainment and for the first time, of course, I'd like to say it again, in high definition reviewing WWE. And before getting into any review of any show, WWE All-Stars is right around the corner in March 29th. It will be in stores. And I'd like to show you its latest and biggest trailer of all. Trailer of All-Stars. Check it out. We'll be right back.
Oh my god, that game just will give us what we want from a wrestling game being more than Im imagining how wrestling will be and it's a bit naturalistic the characters but like they are larger in life as they like to call it and it is an impossible impossible matches you can create with it like the rock versus john cena dwayne johnson versus john cena it's an impossible match might never happen in the wwe but it will happen at march 29th when it becomes available to us and we play it on xbox ps3 wii or whatever brand or system it does not matter the, the thing that matters is the kind of entertainment that it will be bringing to us and it will be an explosive game ladies and gentlemen and i believe it might beat raw versus smackdown or smackdown versus raw series in every in each and every year 2005 or even the older series like smackdown here comes the pain or whatever we'll just wait for the game itself to see what kind of entertainment that it might bring to us now let's start off with monday night raw now the new nexus with CM Punk after the new initiations or whatever it is called. Let's just review the most thing that we got out from Monday Night Raw. Cena started off the show with um, talking about the nexus and the new nexus and how he did not get his hands on each and every member of the nexus. And he will do so when he meets CM Punk in the ring later at that evening. And then Nexus decides to beat down John Cena at the beginning of the show. But apparently, um, the WWE Tag Team Champions Vladimir Kozlov and Santino Marella decided to help out Cena as last week Nexus attacked them at the beginning of the show. But anyways, that was not our story. The story was at the end of the match between CM Punk and Cena as they both were in control in the match. But anyways, some... Um, some guy from the crowd getting in and apparently a new Nexus uh, member, he gets in and instead of kicking the hell off um, John Cena, he decided to like just shoot the hell off um, who? Yeah, CM Punk and then getting him disqualified or getting Cena disqualified so it's in order to let CM Punk win and in the records it will be saying CM Punk defeated John Cena but that was not the story again. That guy's name, apparently on online, they said that his name is Mason Ryan, did I say it correctly? And, well, apparently, he, well, when I saw him, I said, is that Batista? Is that Dave, the animal? But it turned out not to be. And then, he, when he had started attacking John Cena, I saw, like, is this the next Batista? Like, how evolution started out like Batista got famous in evolution, evolution and because of Triple H like will WrestleMania 28 feature CM Punk versus Mason Ryan if that's his name that will be crazy replacing Batista's career because he is the most powerful character in the WWE used to be of course and after the scandal I don't, I'm not sure is it a real scandal or whatever but can Batista really actually return to the WWE because he has a big major spot but the WWE kept screwing around and trying to push Triple H to levels that he does not deserve and it could be just because he's married to Stephanie McMahon but that's not our subject the main subject is the latest member of the Nexus and as you saw he got on his knees and he accepted um, the armband of and uh, Nexus and that's all for Monday Night Raw but it was kind of another conspiracy show uh, and the WWE is all about conspiracy after another and it could be the era of conspiracies so WWE NXT without wasting any more time on it because it is not that big season 1 was the best 2 was uh, well it was good season 3 was basically entertainment or entertaining and season four well I don't know, know how to label that show but let's just review it we had only one rookie challenge which was um how well do you know your WWE Pro and Derek Bateman won it and previously since the last elimination two weeks ago Derek Bateman had been winning those challenges and now he has eight points wow and um, we only had one elimination, or I meant we only had one rookie challenge. Now to the elimination, and the one who got eliminated was the rat, and Alberto Dorio's rookie. 
Conan O'Brien, right? Or Conor O'Brien, something like that. He's the rat, so goodbye, O'Brien. And that's all for WWE NXT. Friday Night Smackdown. My favorite show, but not the one who's gaining more views than the other shows. But that's not our topic. Our topic is, and basically, the main idea of the new Nexus, the new, new, new Nexus. Did I say new twice or th three times? But anyways, Wade Barrett decided to call his group and decided to make it an equal group, like there is no leader, but apparently he walks in front of them, and that means leadership. But anyways, he called them the core, C-O-R-R-E, like, uh, first of all, when he said the core, I was like, is it Intel core, like from computers, or what's, uh, what the fuck was he talking about? And he called themselves, themselves, they called themselves the core, and they started out, um, mentioning their names and what are their benefits from the group or whatever then Teddy Long, Teddy Long gets out and say, telling them that he is not an announced general manager, he is not a computer and then he said that he is not going to accept what the Nexus or the core will do in Smackdown or on Smackdown and if they do not play along the rules or they get outside of their limits Teddy Long will have a problem with that and like between the match between um, Alberto Del Rio and Our Truth, and well, between the matches or the match, we saw that Theo Long was knocked out and like in a coma or something, and the ambulance just took him to the nearest hospital. And that all signs lead to the core attacking Theo Long, but we do not know that. So now let's just fast forward through the main event. And like before the main event started, The Miz decided to go out and just wamble about what he did last Monday Night Raw. And that thing that I did not talk about on the Raw review because I kept it for th this time. As he showed us what he did on Raw. And that's what he did was like kinda injuring Randy Orton. And that what he did was just basically to end his phrase because I'm The Miz and I'm awesome and that crap. And they literally showed us that Randy Orton is half injured, but coming to think about it, if Orton is really injured and John Morrison just wins a contendership or whatever on Monday Night Raw, it could be the night that we have been waiting for. John Morrison versus The Miz on a pay-per-view where we are guaranteed to see Morrison taking his year and taking the spotlight that he deserves truly. And I believe I'm, I am praying for Orton to be injured, fake or real, I do not care, I just need to see Morrison at the Royal Rumble competing for the WWE title, defeating The Miz, and standing tall. Let's just go back to Friday Night Smackdown, Edge came out and they just talked and talked a bit. Later on we had the main event which was between Edge and who? Yeah. A member of the core, which, which turned out to be Justin Gabriel, and they just went at it, went at it, and at the end, Ezekiel Jackson got involved without the referee getting, like, noticing him to disqualify him. But anyways, with a cross line, and there you saw it, Justin Gabriel, one, two, three, and then they started out, they started at attacking him one by one and after the 450 splash you saw her edge was standing or laying down on the ring on the wrestling map or the, or the rings map or whatever they call it and then Ziggler gets in puts his big shoe on his chest or belly and standing tall like this is the image that we will see at the Royal Rumble um, next Sunday and I believe like Dolph Ziggler as the future World Heavyweight Champion that is b like, it makes no sense, and there is no reason to see this guy standing tall. And well, I'm just complicated. I'm confused, and I'm not complicated. The show is complicated. The concept is complicated, and I'm confused. And each and every true wrestling fan in the WWE universe is also confused and saying, "Why Dolph Ziggler? Why not Kofi Kingston? Why not?" Who, um, John Morrison, and hell, even Drew McIntyre. Why Dolph Ziggler? I admit that he's good and athletic and all that crap, but 
Like, I compare him to Shelton Benjamin, and I see Shelton Benjamin is greater than him. Even though he did reach his goal as becoming an ECW championship, but in where we are, they do not like ECW championships. The top is TNA Heavyweight Championship, WWE Championship, World Heavyweight Championship. You do not have that on your list, then you're not a, a star. And, well, since Dolph Ziggler is facing Edge, I believe, like, if these guys win, like, if Miz Tansel at the Royal Rumble, and if Edge, or I meant Dolph Ziggler stands tall at the Rumble, like, what's the WWE going after? What is their concept? I do not know. And that's all for Friday Night Smackdown. And now to talk about the Royal Rumble. No more 30 men battling for a chance to may to go or wow to headline WrestleMania and def and to like capture his dream and like take on the WWE Champion and screw everything up. But the main idea is we will have 40 men, not 30. I repeat. 14 men battling for that opportunity and that will be crazy and the biggest Royal Rumble in the history of the WWE and that is a huge milestone for the WWE and that's just a slap on the face of TNA and that's why TNA is not featured on our show tonight. And anyways, this is the high definition that I have been talking about, the high definition experience that is. And one, th one more thing I'd like to talk about is in the WWE is that they're making, like, they want us to accept the idea of Raw Superstars showing on SmackDown and also vice versa as SmackDown Superstars showing up on Raw. And that's what has been, that was the thing transpiring in each show. Like on Monday Night Raw, we see our truth on SmackDown. Uh, excuse me, on Raw, we saw Alberto Dorio, and on SmackDown, we saw our truth and, um, Another thing that was happening is seeing The Miz. Now, next, uh, next Monday Night Raw, we'll see a champion versus champion, WWE champion, The Miz versus SmackDown's World Heavyweight Champion. That will be another Raw SmackDown match, as each and every week we have kind of been seeing these type of matches. And I don't know where, why they are doing these things, but obviously it is for a good cause or for just boosting up the, uh, the ratings or they want to not have a separate crowds and alliance or whatever they want to have a huge force as viewers or audience they want to have the same audience like there's some people who say smackdown sucks i just want to stick with raw and vice versa and what i'm my point is that with this merge they will gain both audiences views and they will just grow their network and there have been some rumors about WWE launching its like its own network and we don't know what is their plans but they might make a good network or whatever and that's all for a sports entertainment industry reviews or whatever and that's it for the 51st episode which is finally in high definition thanks for watching Comment right below, hit the subscribe button up there, and only like and do not dislike. That's all I got to say. See you next Friday on the Extreme Show. Yours truly, Jack Mazidi. Peace out.